Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of Rain that they did on April 14th and 16th in 1966. In March of 66, John and Paul got together at John's estate and wrote Rain. 70% attributed to John and 30% attributed to Paul. John says it's just a song about people who always complain about the weather. I've been reluctant to teach a song because you can't get it to sound exactly like the recording without utilizing some serious recording tricks. Now the Beatles go into EMI on April 14th and they record the rhythm tracks for Rain in the key of A and played it a little faster because they were going to slow the tape down to make it sound like in the key of G. And that gives the guitars that otherworldly sound and the drums sound humongous. They did five takes of that rhythm track with the usual lineup, Paul on bass, John and George on guitars and Ringo on drums, and they decided that take five is the best. Ringo says it's his personal all-time favorite uh, Beatles track because of all the cool fills he did. And there's possibly a Ringo mistake because there's two extra beats before the first chorus, which may or not have been intentional. Well, after they were cool with how it sounded in the key of G, they slowed the tape down and John sang his lead vocal. Then they sped the tape back up to the key of G, and that's why John's voice sounds, you know, pretty ethereal. They also put something on his voice called ADT, which is artificial double tracking. Back in those days, they used to double track a lot of the lead vocals, but it's not easy to do. To sing with yourself and get it rhythmically and pitch perfect is, is quite laborious and, and could take hours. So an engineer at EMI, Ken Townsend, found a way to do it electronically. Now what he did was he took a lead off the record head of the multi-track, fed it into another tape recorder recording at a different speed and sent it back into the original multi-track. And by varying the speed, he could get like a, anywhere from a 30 to a millisec to 100 millisecond delay, kind of an echo. And if you did it right, it sounds like the person sang twice. I could simulate it very easily. Watch. Um, this is the sound of artificial double tracking as I speak in my genuine simulated radio announced voice. <laughs> so after they uh, got done that day, John took a rough mix home and they gave it to him tails out, which means they just fast forwarded the tape for him after they made a copy. And this is the ending of the tape called tails out. So John gets home and he smokes a big fat hash joint and he thinks it's heads out. So he, he puts it into his Brunel tape recorder the normal way, and when he plays it, everything's going backwards, and he loves the sound of his voice backwards. So they go back in the studio on April 16th, and, and John wants to use that. That day, they, uh, they're in studio two, and they took 11 hours of experimenting, and what they ended up doing was taking a little bit of John's uh, uh, verse and chorus, flew it into a, uh, uh, another tape recorder, flipped that tape, and flew it back into the ending, and that's why you hear a little bit of backwards John singing. And I'll simulate that for my sound alike. That day they also had uh, Ringo overdub uh, Tambourine. Uh, John, Paul, and George sang those cool harmonies, and uh, John sang harmony with himself on the choruses. Most interesting that day is Paul replaced his, uh, his bass that he originally recorded. They were never satisfied with the sound of the bass in those days, but they came up with a cool idea. What they did was, uh, I have props today. <laughs> they took a regular speaker and then they, where was it? Here it is. Uh, they soldered an input jack onto the speaker and the speaker becomes a microphone. So when you take this as a microphone now and put it right in front of the bass cabinet, it captures the sound of the bass notes a lot better. And that's why after 1966, you know, the Paul's bass, was, was thicker and more prominent. Um, they never played the song live. They did three lip sync versions of it for promo films. And it was released May 30th, 1966 on Capitol as a 45 B-side of uh, Paperback Writer and June 10th in the UK. And it came out on the Hey Jude album in uh, February of 1970. Well, I came up with a way to uh, simulate the sound as close as possible in the key of G. So let's get started. George Harrison is playing his Gibson SG on Rain. Uh, something like this one. This is a regular SG that I had this uh, aftermarket Vibrola put on to kind of beatleize it, which may have been a mistake because uh, it's such a sensitive whammy bar, it doesn't stay in tune. Nevertheless, um, they're, they're, they're playing in A, 
but they're not even tuned to concert A. They're, they're tuned somewhere a little sharp of G sharp to make their A chord. Uh, matter of fact, here, listen to the original recording. You'll see what I mean. So you can hear that there, George is playing in this form like, and again, I have this tune to that, uh, to where they were playing an A. Mm -hmm. Right, that's, that's what they originally recorded um, before they slowed it down to the key of G. And most importantly is the chord when, on the chorus where he goes, right, you know, they play. But if you're going to play in the key of G, you know, you can't get the second chord to ring out because it has so many open notes. To play the same notes in G, you're going. Yeah, it would be. That ain't going to make it. So let me retune to a concert pitch and uh, I'll show you how to do it in G. So now I'm tuned in concert pitch, but I've got my high E string tuned down a whole step to a D. So when I play an open G chord, I get a sound like this. Now again, this isn't what they did on the record, but this is how to get it to sound as close to the record as possible in the key of G. So at the beginning, you play this. All based on just that basic G chord, except I'm, I'm, I'm letting the low notes ring out. And then I'm getting some, some you know, melody notes. while I have that G ring it out. Okay, now for a verse, again, G. Regular C chord. Pick up. Now for your D chord, because remember the, the chords are basically just G, C, and D for the verses. So now when we get to the D chord, just let your fourth and third string ring out and play a D note to a C note. To a G chord. Now we get to the C chord, play, play an open C. And if you like, all the way to that, uh, to that D that's tuned down. Oops. You can do that, yeah. The rhythm is actually... Back to just messing about with the G. Alright, so, so here's a verse. Now this will all work even better when we put John's rhythm guitar in there too, but this, this, this part will get you to sound pretty much just like the record. Okay, at the end, the second verse is, is similar. Uh, if you want it perfectly, charts and tabs are available at MikeBocelli.com and you'll see every single measure of George's part. Um, before we get to the first chorus now uh, on the C chord, uh, George's part would be a little different. It's, it'd be like... Um, <laughs> those extra two beats da, da, da. Uh, and then into the into the chorus so for the chorus just play a, a regular G chord up to the B string and for that second uh, droning chord play just put your first finger on C and play all five strings except for the low string 
and then a figure on G. And when we put it together with John's rhythm part, you'll see it sounds exactly like the record. Um, most of the verses uh, of George's part are similar, and there's some variance. Again, charts and tabs will show you every measure if you like. Like on verse three, he, he plays simpler. On verse three, he goes. You really hear uh, that low A right there. Then. And then uh, at the beginning of uh, verse four, too, there's a little difference. He, it would be, um, let's see. Now on those, since we have the open D, we can go. <laughs> this is my, if I even get near this thing. It does that. Um, so on that C chord, you can go. Something like that. And then back to G. Fun to do. Uh, the only difference you'd, you'd need is be on the, on the fade out. Um, George's part would be something like this. It would sound, um, let's see, I'm looking at the chart. Yeah. And there's some uh, real low notes that are dubbed in that I'll talk about um, uh, when, I, when I show you John's part. So that's a great way to simulate rain in the key of G, just like George Harrison. John Lennon is playing his double cutaway Gretsch 6120 on Rain. I'm using a country classic, which has a similar pickup, so the tone should be close. Now remember, when he originally did the rhythm track, John was playing just basically A, D, and E. Now, when he plays that E chord, you'll hear a low D on the original 45 and that threw some people off thinking oh they must be tuned odd but that's all that is is you hear um, his open e sounding like a low d but in order to get the jangly sound in g we'll we'll we'll, we'll do like this just standard tuning so on your g chords first of all just play up to the second string on the intro like this then drop your pinky to get a d on the on the second string get you the same kind of twang. Now on the verses, you uh, simply play a, a G chord, and again, just, just strumming up to the second string. First position C. But when you get to your D chord, just play a three note D chord. Just play uh, the fourth, third, and second string. All right, and then back to your G. C. A full five string C. Right? Really simple part, very effective with George's lead work. So, again, here's the first verse. Second verse is similar, except again it has that extra two beats. So there's two extra beats, you know, uh, and then the chorus. So for the chorus chords, play this. First, play a G, but use your pinky to get the D. You could even play this G if you prefer. But to my ear, this will be closer to the record. And then you play a C9, but play it like this, with a low G. Right, so, oops, <clears throat> up to the D. Da -da -da. I don't 
and strum on G. If you do that, combined with George's SG part, it'll sound just like the record. And the only different strumming part is on the uh, end fade, for the most part, and, and you'll play the full G like this, and strum, strum this pattern, strum, um, did I do that right? Read the chart, Mike. That's, that's the strum part, very close to it uh, for, the, for the outro. And the, what you'll hear also on the outro is a couple of low notes. And that again throws people off thinking, oh, they were tuned some crazy way. No, they were just standard tuning, pitched up uh, in the key of A, slowed down in the key of G. But there are uh, three low notes that I, I'll, I simulate on my sound like, and it's just a G, uh, G, D, G, tuned real low, like. But to my ear, that's George playing that on, on his uh, Fender Bass 6, because it's too clean to be on an acoustic guitar. So that's what I think that overdub is, and that, I use the Keras for my, uh, the fade. Uh, any road, those are the parts you'll need to play Rain, like John Lennon, you know, sounding like him on the record. So I put it all together uh, in a sound like for you to learn both parts and play along with me and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And, and it's featuring uh, Richie Ringo Russo on drums here. So check this out.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and you gotta admit, it sounds pretty close to the original recording that was played in A and dropped down to the key of G. I suggest you learn George's part and John's part, play along with my sound like, and you'll get it just like the Beatles. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikeBocelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs are, and I even wrote out George's part in the original key of A and G, so you can see uh, how to do it in either key. So, have fun playing these songs. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Take care.